The disciples James and John saw this. They asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and commanded them not to do it. They went on to another village. Once Jesus and those who were with him were walking along the road. A man said to Jesus, I will follow you no matter where you go. Jesus replied, Foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, Follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let dead people bury their own dead. You go and tell others about God's kingdom. Still another man said, I will follow you, Lord, but first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. <clears throat> Jesus replied, Suppose you start to plow and then look back. If you do, you are not fit for service in God's kingdom. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth be forever pleasing to you, O gracious God. Amen. So there are two very important messages in our scripture this day. One, follow Jesus. Two, now. Follow Jesus. Now. You see, in our scripture here this day, Jesus is not being unthoughtful or not considerate to everything that has to be done. He is. But Jesus is reminding us first things first. We always get on our knees before doing anything. We ask God in prayer, what is it you would have me do as your loving servant, God? And when we don't do that, we're not in good shape. Like two of the gentlemen in our scripture today, well, let me do this first, God, and let me do that first, God. Jesus is reminding us, when we follow him, we do things we might never expect when we might never expect them. It's always amazing to me when our, I always follow the liturgy that we get every week in the Lutheran Church. We have a list of the readings that we typically follow. And this Sunday, being Pastor Ginny's last Sunday, follow me being the message is absolute perfection. Because for those of you that do not know her as I do, everything she does is gospel driven. Everything. She is so in tune with those things. And if you talk about now, She's a get-her-done-yesterday person. Not now. Get her done quicker. You see, oftentimes when we follow this advice, we don't make a lot of friends. And we make grandparents worry. What is it like to be a grandparent of grandchildren that go all the way across the world to follow Jesus? You want to cry for joy and cry for fear. And cry for being so proud that you have a 26-year-old and a 30-year-old grandchild that would think to use their vacation to do what they're going to be doing. This is such a calling for them. And as we move on towards the next year, with a vicar that had the tenacity to say, I can write and deliver a good sermon. <laughs> I for totally forgot I wrote that. Before I came to this church, I had done about 10 sermons at different churches. 
but in faith, I knew I could do that. I didn't realize until I went to seminary that I had been critiquing every sermon I'd ever heard from the time I was about five years old at every Lutheran church I had ever been in. That's why I got an A in the class known as exegetical, because you have to critique the Bible passage. What would you preach on about that? And when I had a list of about 30 things, the professor just scratched his head. He said, boy, I want to hear all those. <laughs> There's just some things in our lives that we are so clearly called to do. For Mr. Irby, that was being a loving, outstanding husband and father. For Gail, that is being one of the most creative people I have ever seen in my life who can make silk out of a sow's ear, literally. For Mom, Judy's mother, there's not a day that goes by that she does not read her Bible and holds herself highly accountable for everything she reads in there and asks questions. Pretty cool. So whenever we get to a point where we feel like, you know, what is it I can do? Get on our knees. If you won't be at church tomorrow, I want to share something I got this week. If you were here to see any of the pictures from the mission trip that they took in Middletown, New Jersey last week, five people went to redo a home that was completely demolished in Hurricane Sand. But here are the two letters that I got from the Lutheran Social Ministries of New Jersey. You will really appreciate this. I always try to be extremely reverent. However, let me get out of the pulpit for me to just go like this. <laughs> okay. This letter is from Amy Penanga who is in charge of Lutheran Disaster Response. Dear Zion Lutheran Church, thank you for volunteering in New Jersey and helping us recover from Superstorm Sandy. Your hard work, dedication, and enthusiasm have been an encouragement and a blessing to our residents. When you generously give up your time and energy, it is a real reflection of God's love. As a token of our appreciation for your efforts, Enclosed are certificates honoring your hard work. Please distribute these to your team and thank them once again on our behalf. Now listen. With more than 9,000 families still displaced from the storm three and a half years later, it is a long process of recovery. We would be very happy to welcome you back to New Jersey in the future to volunteer with us once again. Thank you. And she hand wrote, you guys were great. I hope you'll be back soon. And she signed her name. The other one is from Chris Christie. Thank you for joining with thousands of others from all around the country who have given so much of themselves to help us recover from the devastation caused by Superstorm Sandy. And the end is, I cannot begin to express my gratitude to you and the thousands of others who have helped in so many different ways. On behalf of the people of the state of New Jersey, thank you for your help and support. Over $200 were raised for the hoagie sale. This was an amazing trip, even though only five people went. And each person that went gets a certificate of appreciation with their names on there from Lutheran Social Ministries of New Jersey. I will leave this at the back for you to look at if you're staying for dinner. <coughs> now, the girls, it was an all-girl team that went, and they will tell you that those days went like that. <coughs> and when we first began, not knowing I would be preaching on this anytime soon, all I said to them was, always know with each day that you are following Jesus. They came back and said the days they were there, they didn't even feel like it was a day. The time went so quickly. They did hard work. They didn't do a lot of lifting. They absolutely 
painted rooms, tile floors. The, when you see them, make sure you chat with Kelsey and Kayla Zamudio, Deb Davies, and also Alan Frederick. They did amazing work. They could have done a whole lot more with that week. All of them are involved. Allie is on a baseball, two baseball teams. The Samudios, I know Kayla is cooking constantly and she's on a baseball team. Kelsey's ready to take classes for art. And we all know how busy Deb Davies is. But they chose to follow Jesus for that week. What a joy it is to be able to tell that story. What a joy it will be for you grandparents when they come home safe and sound and listen to their stories. What a joy it will be for Gail who prepared something beautiful for Pastor Ginny as she is the master seamstress. What a joy it is for us today to have fresh bread that Jerry baked with her own hands. This is what happens when we follow Jesus. All good. So our choice this day is as we send Pastor Ginny off with God's speed and love, our message is to continue to have great faith for what God has in store for this community of faith and all we have to offer to this community and beyond. Jesus calls us to follow him. And that is to points far beyond where we can ever imagine. Be blessed on this beautiful summer day. And know that God calls each and every one of us to follow and it is only in prayer and in speaking to one another that we can get an idea of exactly being on the right track. That's why it's important that we all join together on a Saturday evening or a Sunday. <laughs> because when there's more than one of us together, outstanding and wonderful things can happen in Christ's name. Amen.